Hey everybody, this is Russell Holly with Android Central. I am with Jerry, who is also of Android yep. Central. And uh, we are going to take a quick look at the Nexus 5X and Nexus 6P and just kind of share our overall thoughts between the two phones. And we are going to talk uh, about the Nexus 5X and Nexus 6P. We got them both at the same time, uh, so we're going to try something a little different with this video and, and just kind of be a little more personal about our, our you know, feelings on these phones, the strengths and weaknesses. Um, I've been using it for a couple days now. You've just started using the, the 6P yep. a couple days ago. Yep. Uh, so we've got, we've got a few days under our belt with these so far. Uh, and I guess, uh, I guess let's start with the, the, the smaller of the two phones and maybe sure. work our way up. Um, so this is supposed to be the spiritual successor to the original Nexus 5. And so what they did with the hardware, they, they, they kept that kind of soft touch feel yep. to the back, yep. even with the white version. The white version of the original 5 was that like glossy plastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this has got kind of soft touch. It's not quite as uh, as grippy as what we had on the original five, um, but, but it's, it's way better than what we see on a lot of plastic right, phones right it's now. It's not that fingerprint smudge, yeah, messy thing. No, I mean this feels like yeah. you know old school soft touch plastic, and and it's got a it's got a really nice kind of tactile feel to it. But it's also super plasticky. Like this is a really right. light, uh, Un unashamed plastic. Yeah, no, it's not a bad one. I mean it doesn't like flex or anything. Yep. Uh, it, it doesn't feel cheap. It just feels really, really light, uh, and you know it, it feels good. But Make it's sure it's a good feel, it, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so of the two of these phones, this is the one that I kept reaching for because it was so light. I could I could grab it with one hand, I could use it with one hand, uh, you know, and, and it was just something that was it was always comfortable when I went to use it, um, and and I think that that's a really good thing. I think that they nailed that. Was one of the things that I think was what made the original Nexus Five so uh, popular. Was it? It was that that kind of just the right size. It felt really good in the hand. It wasn't particularly heavy. It wasn't a fingerprint magnet, and so in in that respect, I feel like LG and Google did a good job bringing back that kind of look and feel. It's it's still a little bigger than well, the original Nexus Five, but that's just how things are now. Everything's yeah, everything's a little, a little bit bigger. bigger. And really, I mean, compared to the to the six yeah. P, you you put these side by side, and really, it's I mean, it's a substantial, noticeable difference. Sure. In, uh, in how much smaller these phones what, are, so. I, what I really, the camera hump, so much to do was made about both of them. Oh yeah, and this is and nothing. They're, it's, yeah, they're, and it, they're fine. But the design of this camera hump is also something interesting, something we got asked a lot about in the forums, was if the camera hump on this was enough that it caused rocking when you set I, it I on the it does, on the table, and it doesn't. No, it's perfect. Unless you're poking like right up here in the corners. And if you want uh, to stop, don't poke right. right there. <laughs> Uh, then, then it'll rock a little bit. But if you're setting this on a table and you want to poke at the the screen to do something, um, you're not going to get it to rock like you would with a Moto X uh, or even with a G4. And and the same here. But of course, that's because this is <coughs> it's wide. It's flat all the way across you, you, the. It doesn't rock or move around. But it, it it just they don't neither one protrude nearly as much as a lot of us thought they would based on looking at their earlier pictures. Yeah. So there's that. Fingerprint sensor on this thing is amazing. And on both of them. On both. Right. It's, I, so it, it, these things have these two phones share a lot. They share the. It's the same camera sensor. Mm -hmm. It's the same fingerprint sensor running Nexus imprint. Uh, and with that camera sensor comes the uh, the the IR uh, for laser autofocus. Uh, right. And the the dual, dual stage flash. flash yeah. uh, both would work pretty well. I think the front facing cameras are the same on both of these. They take very, very similar shots if they're yeah. not identical. They, they look um, very close. So I'm pretty sure that it's the same sensor there as well. Uh, but that, when you when you get away from those things, we, there are some, some serious differences between the two. The, uh, the screen on this, um, I think it's okay. It's not, it's not a spectacular screen. It's a, it's a, it's a, decent, uh, a decent LCD screen compared to a lot of the LCD screens that have come out this year. It's yeah. it's not quite as good as the uh, the LCD screen on the Moto X Pure Edition, um, but it's but it's not a terrible screen. It's uh, it's a little tiny bit on the warm side, and you really aren't you know you're not hurting for for pixels. You're not going to look on this thing and say you know I can I can see the pixels or um, it's not super no. great in sunlight. Uh, I think it's its only real weakness is in direct sunlight. It's it's not the best. Um, but but as a display that you're going to use for for all day long, I you, you're not going to get much more out of a three hundred and eighty dollar right. phone. And that's that's we have to keep that in mind always. Yeah, that's a three hundred and eighty dollar phone. 
Yeah, and I mean, as as a phone, you know, a, a phone that has a, a three hundred and eighty dollar price tag, I think that the display on it is just fine. Um, the other thing about this is the the battery uh, will will get me through roughly the same uh, battery that I got out of the G4. Okay. Um, so it was it was like that whole day. I get up, you know, six a.m. and I have uh, you know the the phone stays on me until ten o'clock at night. When I get to that 10 o'clock at night, it's starting to throw the 15% the battery warnings where it, you know, it needs to go on a charger, it needs to flip into battery save mode. Um, so it, it gets me through that whole day of like kind of normal checking emails, playing a game for a few minutes and stuff like that, but it's not going to get much more than right. that. And this is a great place to test our battery life. Yeah, oh yeah, and here, the, I mean, we've been surrounded by, by so many people using phones, signal strength is, has been kind of waving back and forth, and so this has been a really great test to see what happens when these phones encounter, uh, you yep. know, kind of low radio signal, or, and, and I haven't had any problems with this so far. I've been using, uh, half the week I used this on Google Fi, and the other half I used it on Verizon Wireless, uh, and, and it's, been, it's been great the whole time. Yeah. I, there hasn't been any, like, dramatic spikes in battery or anything like that. Doze works exactly the way that it's supposed to on both networks uh, that I tested it on. It's, you know. And, you know, I, I can pretty much mirror most of what you're saying here. Uh, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, I get a little bit better battery life than I did with the Nexus 6. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's time to get on the charger. We're working it a little harder here than I normally would. So I, I won't have a problem in my use. But... You know, you're, you're going to want to make sure you have so, a way to charge it. When you take it out for the day, it's, phones no longer are designed to run two or three days. These are good. They're not great. They're good. But if you're sitting them side by side, I think that this one gets noticeably better battery well, life than this one does. Probably. I think, it, I think it's, it's by about an hour and a half to two hours uh, from, from what I used the, you know, in the conditions that I had them and side would, by side. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling it off the charger here the past few days at like 6 in the morning and then when all the beer is drank and we're all done in the end of the evening, it's time to charge it again. And that's that's okay with me. Uh, I, I've said before that I probably won't use the fingerprint sensor, but it's amazingly fast. It's accurate. I took the time to set up a finger on each hand and it goes through and it seems to work every time. I don't have any complaints. Uh, but you got to set it up right. Right. And it tells you. When you get yours, or if you're interested in it, you take a look at it, you follow the directions, it'll tell you, make sure part of your fingerprint is, is perfectly in the middle, and yeah, lift it and move it. And you're going to run into some people who are used to the Samsung or the Apple way of doing it, where it's like 18 different finger presses right. to try and you know map your phone. Uh, and Google said this on stage. They said that this was the, one of the fastest uh, fingerprint setup processes, and, uh, and it, it absolutely is. It's, right. it's six uh, images that it captures and stitches them together to a fingerprint that it grabs. Uh, and as long as you did a good job putting your finger all around that circle to make sure that it got as much of your finger as possible during those six captures, then it's great. Uh, it, you know, very, very low failure rate, and it's so fast to unlock the phone. Uh, well, one from, thing from I, that fingerprint. Yep. And another thing I, I don't want to forget, the front-facing speakers on the 6P, they're, they're, they're really good. They are, yep. They are, I, I would say, I'll go on record and say they're as good as boom sound that you get on HTC. They get as loud as boom sound. I don't yeah, know if they get as clear. they're not as rich, but they, they, they have the volume, and it's not distorted and crackly when it puts it out. Uh, if you really wanted to, you know, have a stereo in your hand. You probably would use head headphones, but you don't have to. You can get decent sound out of the speakers. Uh, voice calls, I called my wife for a little bit. Maybe too early to tell, but she said it sounded fine, so that's compared to the other phones I've used. It sounds okay. Yeah, and I did a bunch of audio quality tests okay. on it as well, and I didn't have any problems. I have noticed one issue, and maybe this is my <laughs> phone, or maybe this is the location here. But when you've got all these people and a lot of them are using T-Mobile and the network gets bogged down, I've had this reboot a couple times. It comes right back, it doesn't get hot, everything seems fine. I just wanted to throw that out there that yeah. maybe that's something you might be experiencing if you have one or maybe not. So let's, uh, let's, let's focus on some of the things that we're not huge fans of now that we've kind of talked these up a little bit. The, the 5X, the, the stereo speaker on this thing, I don't, I don't dig at all. 
it's a you got you got two speaker grills here, but this one here is the only one that's piping. Ah, the old moto trick. Yeah, this one here is the only one that's piping audio when you're listening to music, and it's it's uh, not particularly loud, not particularly clear. Um, so it's uh, it's one of those things that you need to keep in mind if, if uh, you know speaker audio is something that you are actively looking for. This one's probably going to let you down, but you're not going to have that problem with that. No, one. no. Uh, the six P is definitely my, good for that. My only problem here is completely subjective, and it's the size. I wish. This package was in that size, but having said that, this is so much easier for me to use than the Nexus 6 because it's a, a, a good couple millimeters more narrow. It's also thinner from yeah. the back, oh, too. Yeah, it's There's no camera it's, or it's battery thin. bulge. Uh, I kind of miss the swell from the Nexus 6 holding it. For the curve. Right, but but I don't think this needs it. No. So there's, no, there's nothing I really don't like here about either. So, of the two phones, which one are you recommended for people to take a look at? I'm going to go out on a limb and say, if you really want a Nexus phone, you want the 6P. I think I'm going to have to agree. Like, I, I really dig what what LG and Google were trying to do with this. But there's there's $120 difference between these two phones, and it feels like it. Yeah. This feels $120 better than this one. Oh, so this, yes. It's, this is, it, this is, is it is absolutely, you know, if, if you absolutely can't stand a bigger phone and you want the Nexus experience, there's nothing wrong with the 5X. Right. I think you're, that it's a good phone. You're going to like what but you if, get. Yeah, it, the, the one that I would recommend of the two, even if you're not a huge fan of big phones, would be the 6P. I think it's just the better all-around phone uh, and ends up being just really worth its price tag. $499 is a steal for this phone. I'm going to have to agree with you. Yeah. I mean, on all counts, it's... I would probably get that for my wife, yeah. who is not a Nexus fan. She just likes new phones every year. She'd be happy with that, but if you are that person who has to have the Nexus every year, probably want to look at the 6P. All right, and uh, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. I am Russell. This is Jerry. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the 5X or the 6P, hit us up in the comments or head to the forums. We are always there talking. Thanks yes. for watching.